Hello, I'm Scott with Sean's Photography, and here we have a Yamaha W7 here. We have removed all 27 screws that go all the way around the outside, and these six right here on top. We're going to install a floppy drive eliminator into this unit. Um, this keyboard is 30 something years old, um, still functions, still works. I think they're a great um, workstation. A lot of people have mixed opinions on this, but my opinion, I think they're one of the the better keyboards of their time. Again, it's no uh, DX7 or anything like that. Um, the SY, I was never a fan of the SY. It's either a DX7 or it's not. Um, but this unit here has seen a lot of stage life and floppy drive still works, but it's about time to uh, remove that and put in the eliminator. So let me pull this top off here and see what we got going on inside. Now we're gonna tilt it back and I see that we have some wires, so I'm gonna have to grab something else to stabilize this when I hinge it back. So give me a second and I'll be back. All right, so I mounted my super clamp behind the back here. Had to relieve the tension off the cables from these little spots right here. So here's our floppy drive. It's gonna be Four screws for that. We're going to switch over to a different size bit for the for these screws since they are small. I guess we can move that. I'm just going to throw them back behind here so they don't get mixed up or get lost. Now the W7. It's a 720 uh, kilobyte floppy drive, so it's not like your standard 144. That was uh, one of the downsides to this unit compared to some of the other ones. Because a lot of the other ones didn't have the... Uh... I'm trying to remember which way that goes. All right. So there we go. Um, again, it's a yeah. So this is a 720 floppy drive. A lot of the other newer models have the 1.44s, which are more common. They don't have the little ribbon compared to um, this one. I mean, well, they have a ribbon, but they don't have. They have like a 30. 30 something pin ribbon compared to this little 26 pin ribbon. So when you're changing out your drive, you wanna make sure you, you're getting the right one. One of the most common things about this uh, these keyboards was that this little belt right here on this floppy drive would go bad and then it wouldn't function. There's nothing wrong with this one. This one actually still functions 100%, but we're gonna change it out before um, the belt goes out. And this way we have a eliminator in there. So. This here's our eliminator. This is what we're gonna be using today. This one actually has a little screen on here, a rotary dial. It's already set up for the ribbon connection. So when I go to put this in, it's gonna go in like that. So, here we go. I'm gonna shut down and I'll come right back. All right, so. We have our floppy drive eliminator. We 
going to take out these four screws here. this housing. I'm going to bring it over to this one. Now they supply screws with this, but um, yeah, I think we will use the screws that are supplied. So let's take those out. Move those out of the way. We'll grab our screws. mount the original screws back into here so this way we don't lose them or get them mixed up and those that are floppy over off the side Come in here, line our spots, Get the first one in. I always do it as a cross, like a spare tire. We're putting on a spare tire or putting on a tire. Now the key thing is make sure we know our orientation of our cable. So we want the writing facing inwards. So we're going to come in this way. Slide that into our ribbon connection. Just like that. Now we'll flip this over. And we will mount this into its original setting slide right in there. We have our four screws here. not in the way. Alright. It's on just like that. See how it looks. Alright, 
so let's put our valuable A drive out of the way because again like I said it still works I don't want to damage it let's put this sucker back together so I'll come back and have it flip back over I won't put the screws in it but we'll test her out and see what it sounds like all right we got the floppy drive emulator into the W7 let's turn it on should be on disk one I should have an auto load function on this so it set up these sounds I used to use in the 90s okay it's auto loading so I mean it's working right off the USB drive let's go to 10 so that should be a drum set Says this. Yeah. Seems to work just fine. Everything seems to work. This is how to install a floppy drive emulator on a W7. I'll be installing one on the W5 as well. Again, my name is Scott with Sound Photography, and thank you for watching.